Okay, Oscar fans, we're on the eve of the Directors Guild of America Awards, and let's be honest, we don't know what's going to win there or Best Picture at the Oscars, but I, I'm hoping that Ann Thompson does. Uh, and uh, first of all, DGA, who wins there? And then these top races at the Oscars for Director and Picture, where do you stand? I'm clearer on who's going to win the Directors at the Oscars, George Miller of Mad Max, than I am at the DGA. I'm assuming it's going to be both, because it usually is both. Not always, yeah. but usually. Um, and I think that, that the wide range of Guild Awards that have gone in the direction of Mad Max, you know, the incredible love that's being shown throughout the crafts is going to result. This is the big scale movie like Life of Pi or, or like, gravity. you know, Gravity. Exactly. Where the filmmaker who made that world come to life is going to be rewarded. And that was especially true in the case of Mad Max, where every detail came out of his imagination and he made it real. And I think the directors are going to recognize that. Now, sometimes, or actually most times that is true, but sometimes we have the year like Hugo, which sweeps the tech awards, and then Marty Scorsese doesn't win Best Director, right? He happened to have won recently, and I also don't think that that movie was a real Best Picture contender that everybody loved. I really don't. Okay. That's, um, a, that's a good you decision know, to make. Whereas, I think, I think, I don't think Mad Max is going to win Best Picture. I think it's going to win direct. It's going to win a lot of Oscars. A lot. Yeah, oh, a absolutely. It's going to sweep those tech categories. Yeah. I so, agree. So Appreciate that's my sense. Reason. That is my sense. I really don't think it's going to be the big short or or spotlight. These movies are too small. They're just not, you know, even, even though we thought that the big short might be surging and it may have some support. Uh, the fact that it didn't win the, the SAG Ensemble Award suggests it's not all in the bag. Pete Hammond told me yesterday that he discovered that at PGA, four films came very, very close to winning, and Big Short only won by three votes. Isn't that fascinating? Well, that's good intel. Yeah. But I wonder how what, reliable what's all, it is. Well, but what's also great is that it's not three films that came in at very close near the top. It's four, which suggests that Mad Max was the fourth, and of course Spotlight, uh, Big Short, and uh, Revenant, would we assume, would be the others, right? But, but honestly, I still believe that if Revenant had a lot of uh, real support, it would have won the PGA. It should have won the PGA as the biggest scale kind of popular movie with Leo in the lead for Best Actor. There's all sorts of reasons why the producers should have gone for Revenant. And so it surprised me that they didn't. I ran into Steve Gatos at uh, the office the other day, and he said that his theory is the Revenant didn't win PGAs because it did crest rather late. I mean, it was the, uh, you know, the box office surge, the release was late, and of course the industry saw it earlier, but this big uh, upswell of support, um, you know, came later. Anything, and you see any truth to that? That's possible. I actually recognize that that spotlight was surging at the point that the SAG uh, voters were voting, and and these other uh, awards have come come a little later in the voting process. So these guilds are the last of the of the they they would pick up the the box office surge. But I think you're right. I think it's a close race between between those among those four films. I think yeah. it makes it an interesting race this year. Nobody yeah. knows. I, Nobody I, knows. I go with the spotlight idea that it is the most serious, that it has the most gravitas, that it's the most important, if you like. And of course, Michael Keaton's speech at the SAG Awards, you know, absolutely reveals that. But, um, and it was, it was a smart speech. On the other hand, how many people watch the SAG Awards? Yeah, so. Oh, I know, I know. And of course, it was shut out at the Golden Globes, uh, Spotlight was. It's not nominated for director at BAFTA. BAFTA's been right about Best Picture six of the last seven years. It was wrong last year because it went with Boyhood. But in general, uh, be, ever since they moved the date and changed the voting process at BAFTA to uh, be in step with the Oscars, it's been a very fairly reliable uh, set of tea leaves in some races anyway. So if we look to there, and these are the kind of foreshadowings we like to see, Spotlight's not nominated for Best Director. And that's, that's another example of everything's out of whack this year, isn't it, Anne? I mean, the tea yeah, leaves we normally rely on aren't being consistent. 
I would say that Spotlight is an anomaly in the sense that it's this really small movie. We know it's going to win Best Screenplay. That much we can we can assume. But it, it's it's a Talking Heads movie. It just is, and and so it has it, it lacks that that scope that you would like to see in most Oscar contenders. And I think we just have to keep that in consideration. You know, the, why would the producers vote for Spotlight? Why would the editors vote for Spotlight? It's just not that big a movie. But there's still reasons why the entire Academy would vote for it. There's that mysterious linkage between the uh, editing award and best picture and if we invoke that this year and look back at what we just learned at the Ace Eddie Awards, in two-thirds of the cases the eventual best picture winner at the Oscars wins an Ace Eddie and this year those winners were Big Short and Mad Max. You um, still have different categories though so it's sort of you know it's sort of hard yeah. to tell like if you look at the art directors what can we learn from the art directors there's period there's contemporary there's fan we don't, what, what do you know what do we know any we know nothing half of the time in recent modern history the movie with the most nominations has won best picture this year of course it's revenant it's outperformed and tom hardy was in there it was nominated for costume we oscarologists didn't see all of the support coming it's not nominated for screenplay. I mean, it's 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 which is uh, a, a telling thing. It is a telling thing, which, of course, because which, because it has no dialogue. <laughs> I know, and and, and <laughs> actually, you're the one. Neither is Mad Max. Neither is Mad Max. Right. 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 And and it was you who pointed that out to me, and I went, ah, of course, that 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 explains all that. But isn't it often the case at the Oscars and where the voters confuse big picture with best picture? And if that's the case, if they go for the big epic, if they go for the big screen movie, it's Revenant or Mad Max, right? Yeah, but I, 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 again, Revenant won. I mean, in other words, Inuritu won last year. You know, he he won for Birdman, and it's just not gonna. Ha I just don't see him winning his best picture two years in a row. I just don't see it. And I don't. And and again, the PGA should have given it the win for that to happen. And I also think that um, the one thing that the Revenant will win is Leo. Leo is that's their win. That's yeah, it's the, cinematography. The, Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's sort of like Lincoln. You know, it was Daniel Day Lewis that made that movie the big thing that you know, and and they're going to get Lebesky for sure. I, I I don't see it not going to Lebesky, but but in the case of of uh, I don't think Mad Max is going to win Best Picture because it's um well first of all those two are going to cannibalize each other in some ways because they're more or less the same and that's the same is also true of Spotlight and The Big Short. They're Absolutely. all going after the same. Uh, you know, constituencies. Um, but I don't think Mad, but Mad Max is a genre movie and there's nothing we can do about that. It's just, they just don't tend to do that. Right, right, right. But back to Revenant for a second. Um, I'm not, it's not my prediction to win Best Picture, but I think it's more in the hunt than we give it credit for because um, I don't think it's a good enough argument. And Pete Hammond said this to me, the same thing yesterday. I just don't feel it, that they're going to go to Inaritu twice. And I don't think that's a valid uh, assumption because I love to invoke Sally Field here that when they like you, they really, really like you. And that there is, a, in general, a honeymoon period at the Oscars where Clint Eastwood can win twice, where Oliver Stone can win twice on the director's side, where Ang Lee, et cetera. Now, they weren't consecutive year not after year. The, not two years in a row. I know, but still, I'm not so sure that really matters. Uh, because we do see consecutive wins on the acting side, whether it's Jason Robards or Tom Hanks. It doesn't happen often, but I'm saying that Inaritu is in that um, honeymoon period now, and that's why I think he's going to win at DGA. I think it is, uh, to, the, uh, to Steve Gatos's point now, now I think The Revenant has sunk in. It's the big movie, it's the epic movie, and it's got that classy component of Leo. And if you look forward to BAFTA, there's an IOU to Inaritu there. They didn't give him the uh, the directing award last year. So I think that uh, I think there are some things that are still strong for that movie that we need to keep into account. It's fun this year. There's a there's a close race and it could go any number of different ways, but the bells are not ringing on the revenant side uh, so far. Not really. Not not judging well, from the that, recent guild that's awards. That's true. That's a good point. And it's also it's a hard movie to love and to cheer for because it's, it's, it's grueling and the rest of it, the whole storyline and the execution of it, that's what makes it a powerful film. And Oscar movies are often about redemption, about hugs, about emotion. And, uh, Agreed. Uh, and that's why Spotlight, Spotlight is, the, is the one. But Spotlight has the ick factor though, Anne. I mean, it's, it's, what about, ick? Child, what ick? it's about child molestation. 
but people get very angry about it. it, it look, the, to the extent that Spotlight and Big Short are the same thing, they're, they're, they're really about exposing what really happened that had a huge impact on our culture, that, that was outrageous, the powerful preying on the weak, all kinds of reasons why both of those films are taken seriously. Spotlight is, a, is truly, it taps into a, 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 they both tap into a sense of outrage, but, but Spotlight is, is, is particularly egregious. I just believe that, that, that it makes people more, even more angry and more upset. You and I know that you generally need support across the Academy to win Best Picture. Spotlight only has five nominations. Big, Big Short only has six. You've got to go back to Crash and to The Departed to find movies, which was almost a decade ago, to find movies that prevail as Best Picture. And in both of those cases, where those movies had, uh, in the case of Departed, only five, you know, of Crash, six, there were other reasons those movies won. In the case of Departed, of course, there was an... Uh, a desire to catch up with with Marty in the case of yeah. crash there was an anti brokeback thing going on right. so um, don't isn't this a huge problem for for big short and for spotlight because um, uh, where's the where's they have the key got to have them nominations but where's the other branch support or does it matter maybe well, it doesn't if you're using your editing argument i do think that the big short wins editing which is a significant thing. It's showier, it's bigger, the performances are bigger. It has, and it does have gravitas, but it's a comedy. And I maintain that that scruffy looking comedy is still a factor for some of the Academy members that, that don't like Matt Margot Robbie in, 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 the, in the bathtub, that don't like the way that he takes certain risks with the formal choices that he made aesthetically. I believe, I love the movie. I love the choices and the risks that, he, that, that Adam McKay took, but there are people in the Academy who are more conservative who don't. And therefore, Spotlight falls on the conservative side of the ledger in a funny way, even though I think they took risks too, making it very normal and naturalistic and not showy, making it very real. Um, it still seems to be more mainstream in a funny way. The Does smartest. That make any sense to you at Absolutely. all? Absolutely. And you know what? And you've got a powerful group of prognosticators behind you and agreeing with you to some extent, at least on George Miller. The people with the best scores at Gold Derby in terms of actual percentage of accuracy are our top 24. You know, we have that special league of the people who performed best last year advance forward to compete against us experts. And if you look forward to their to their predictions this weekend for DGA, 12 out of those 24 say George Miller. Only seven save Inari, two, three say Ridley Scott, two say McKay, and zero for poor McCarthy. At the Oscars, um, their current breakdown is nine for George Miller, eight for Inari, two, six for Adam McKay, and for Best Picture now, they're all picking Big Short, but I'm not sure that they've updated uh, in the recent last few days. I think they're all, that's a reflection of PGA. And the information Pete just gave us about the vote split there um, makes me wonder how strongly we should take the PCA, PGA results. I agree with you there. Um, uh, I mean, so so the, the, the race that I think is really sort of uh, hard to call though, I mean, if you follow the guilds, if you follow SAG, you're gonna go, okay, it's gotta be Alicia Vikander for supporting actress. That is a very, very, very contentious category. I agree with you. I think it's the hardest to call of all the races, literally. But I think that her chief competitor is Kate Winslet, and you think it's Rooney Mara. Uh, you give me your Rooney theory first. My Rooney theory is based on the fact that I think they really, well, also what's weird about this category is that a lot of the, the people nominated are not in a best picture contender. In other words, Carol and Danish Girl and Steve Jobs didn't wind up in, in 45 years, obviously. No, we're, we're in the supporting category. They're not in best, they're not in the best, uh, picture race and neither is is hateful eight so uh, I think that you, you can't use that as a crutch you can't say the most popular movie is this movie but I do believe that Carol which did get a lot of nominations in the end six I believe um, did it I think it is popular it maybe didn't make it to best picture but I believe that Rooney Mara is also popular and I believe that sometimes in that category they go with the young ingenue with class and you could argue that Alicia Vikander is also the young ingenue with class, but she's the outsider. 
ingenue. And I think Rooney Mara is the insider. But I think it's a very close race. I think it's yeah. a very close race. And I could see Rooney winning, I, and I buy your argument for that. I'm just Also, the two of them are both lead actresses in, a, in yes. this race. Yes. So that gives them an advantage over the smaller parts played by the supporting actresses. I think Kate Winslet's still in the hunt here. I think that uh, she is, of course, the lead the lead actress in that movie, and she also gives this really impactful performance. And she has the whole transformation of a famous they person. They love that. They do love they that. Do, yeah. They She's love accents, I mean. and they love they love the degree of difficulty of the dialogue and all of that. They love her. She's won, though. You know. Yeah, she won, won before. But but uh, Ingrid Bergman, Jack Nicholson, people like that win in supporting after having won in lead. It does happen. She's also classy. She's super classy. And, yeah. and, 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 and then, of course, Jennifer Jason Lee is making this big comeback, and she's been around for a long time. She's been nominated before but has never won. This is exciting for her. It is, it is, and it's an exciting year for us, isn't it, Anne, because we really don't know where Best Picture's going. In the past, when we've had uh, cliffhanger years like this, it, well, as we did last year, right after PGA, we went, hmm, should we really trust this boyhood thing, right? Uh, but what this year is different is it's not between two films, like 12 Years of Slave and Gravity or Birdman and Boyhood. It's between three or four, and when you have a race so divided like that, anything can happen because you need fewer votes to win. That's why this is the most exciting race in years. And we it don't is. Know. I absolutely agree. I absolutely agree. We, our, our metal is being tested, Mr. O'Neill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's scary. But uh, you tend to outperform me uh, percentage-wise in these recent years. So uh, I, I have to defer to you and as the expert to steal from. So uh, please make up your mind so I can make up my mind. You got it, dude. <laughs> All right, anything else we want, to, we want to talk about in terms of predictions coming up here for Oscar races? And are there any other races that you think are really noteworthy here? No, I mean, it's kind of, except for the ones we've talked about, it's kind of settling in. I mean, we know Leo's going to win, and we know, you know, Big Short's going to get adapted and editing, and, you know, kind of kind of know where it's going to go. What what do you think is going to happen with visual effects? Is it is it going to be Star Wars, even though Star Wars isn't the uh, the Best Picture nominee? I don't know. Uh, uh, I'm really baffled by that one. I have to look through the stats. Where do you stand on this? I'm not sure. I have I I have been picking Star Wars, even though that's statistically not the way to go. But it yeah. just won the VES, so I think I think it could be Star Wars, and I mm -hmm. think they might want to give Star Wars something, and this I could be the so thing too. that they want to give it. Yeah. You know, maybe maybe uh, maybe um, the older composer of uh, Hateful Eight wins, Morricone wins over John Williams, and they give th this to Star Wars instead, you know? Is there any movie that you're actually rooting for or, or a nominee on the acting or writing side that you, because that's part of the fun of what we do is that uh, we get emotionally invested in these films. Uh, I am so invested in George Miller and Mad Max. That's the one, you know? If there were some huge surprise and Mad Max were to win Best Picture, I would fall down and, and just jump for joy, you know? Well, why? I'm curious. Because it came out of his brain. He, he was dreaming about it on an airplane. And somehow, years later, there you are in the Namibian desert with all these moving vehicles and all these poles, you know, from the Beijing Olympics and, and, and he's ma maneuvering and, and they're setting it up and they're going top speed and Tom Hardy is lashed to the front of a thing with a mask. I mean, it's, it's insane. All the little details, the production design, the costume design, the cameras, it's so brilliant what they did. And, and I, uh, as any student of cinema and anyone who understands how movies are actually put together, how they're actually made, who appreciates those those finer details, it's it's one of the great feats of all time. And it was done by a guy in his seventies. <laughs> you know, I mean, and 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 every little it's it's it, 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 it's like George Lucas creating the Star Wars universe too. It's a similar thing, where this was all out of one man's brain, along with a lot of great gifted uh, artists who helped him to execute it, of course. That's why. The movies that I'm rooting for are not in the best picture race. My favorites of the year are um, uh, Steve Jobs, 
straight out of Compton, inside out. So um, I have to root for them in those those little lower categories. <laughs> Okay, and well, uh, after DGA, let's catch up again and size up this race and see if, uh, if if all the tea leaves get shuffled again. You got it, dude. I'll talk to you later. Very good. Thanks.